Okay. So what we did in the past is if you have a fraction times another fraction, you multiply straight across. So two ninths times fifteen fourths. So two times fifteen to give you thirty over thirty-six. You also sometimes said, oh, well two and four can become one half. 9 and 15, because again, you have the 2 over your 9, 15 over 4, looking like this, you could cross simplify and say, okay, 9 divided by 3, 15 divided by 3, and again, the 2 divided by 2, and the 4 divided by 2, and then instead of having to simplify my fraction of 30 and 36, we simplified our fractions here, and we got 5 over 6 to simplify that way. Both will ultimately get me 5, 6, because 30 divided by um, 6 and 36 divided by 6 to give me 5, 6 either way. And that's ultimately what we're going to do today, but instead of doing it with numbers, we're going to do it with expressions. So our goal is still to simplify rational expressions, but now instead of the symbol between our problems being multiplication, we're going to change it to division. And the idea is that if you are dividing two rational expressions, that's like multiplying the reciprocal. So again, if I told you A divided by B over C divided by B, how do you get rid of a fraction and a fraction? They're exactly multiplied by a reciprocal. And that's all we're going to do today. So all of the division is just going to change to multiplication by its reciprocal. And then all of the work is identical to what we did yesterday. We're going to factor, cross, simplify, find your holes, find your vertical axes. So as I said, today is not bad. It's just that the setup looks different. Yesterday, multiplication. The only thing we're changing a little bit is making it easier. No addition, no subtraction, no factor. Simplify 15 divided by 5. Simplify your 8 and your 6. If I have C times C, we add the exponents. If I have D divided by B. The rule is to subtract the exponents, right? So the D's are going to simplify through subtraction. The C's are going to simplify through addition. And then the A has no problem. So you just want to stay at A and then it on. So 3 times 3 is 9. C times C is C squared. We said that the division of the D's is going to change this to a 1, because 2 minus 1 is 1. So it's going to leave a single D in my numerator. The 5 became a 1. The D went away. The 8 became four and the a state. So you get nine c squared b over four a. If it asked you for domain issues, you would have to say that a does not equal zero and d does not equal zero because the problem started with a d in the denominator. So that's that happening. 
A and B can't be zero. So I told you today, the only thing we're doing is we're changing the symbol between them to be division. So we want to get rid of the dividing symbol by changing it to multiplication. If I change the symbol to multiplication, what happens to my fractions? They go and flip. Minus our cross simple by 35, 7, 18, 12, y cubed and y, x and x squared, divide a squared, divide b, so I get 3 times 5, y squared, my x simplified, my a squared simplified, my b simplified, 2, my a squared canceled, my b squared became a b, my x squared became an x, and my y went away. We talked about domains. Again, A, B, and X cannot be zero. A, B, and X cannot be zero. So the difference between yesterday and today. This is like yesterday. Rational expression times rational expression. Therefore, vertical asymptote at one and negative six. Or negative five. Therefore, my last I 
Now, if your bottom is a number and no variable, no vertical oxygen. So there's not a time that it can be. So like I said, the only difference from here to what we're doing today is that you have to change the vision. A multiplication and you pull up the second fraction. That was it. Division. And I want to look at one of the bottom ones because they're written different. We're not going to work out this one because we're torqued because of the delay and stuff. So x squared minus 16, 12y plus 36 changes to multiplication y squared minus 3y minus 18 over x squared minus 12x plus 32. Make sure if you have mixed variables, you only cancel the same variable of like the same variable. So don't cancel like a y plus 3 and an x plus 3. Yeah? Would that go back in You would, but we're skipping it, so we're going to show you how to set up the bottom ones because they look different. But this, you now know. That looks like what we've been doing. How is this different? Well, this is like the fraction in a fraction example I gave you before. Top fraction, bottom fraction. So the rule doesn't change. The top fraction will stay. Division becomes multiplication. And again, if you would go back and you make it A divided B over C divided D, you flip the bottom. So we're going to flip the bottom. A squared plus B squared and A plus B do not simplify. You cannot factor a sum of squares. You can factor a difference of squares, but not a sum of squares. So A squared plus B squared does not factor. You're just, it's done. <laughs> so A and B still can equal one number. Zero or each other's opposite So A squared cannot equal B squared. So that's how you would do your vertical asymptote. A squared cannot equal negative B squared. But they can't equal each other's opposite. Which is impossible to ever have happen because if you're squaring two things, you're always adding them. So that vertical asymptote will never act appear on your graph. Make sense? Okay. Impossible to have that. Everyone wants to say that trend back again, or talk and trend. 